What is up you guys? My name is Andrew. If you don't know me, welcome to my channel. I make videos about books and vlogs and sometimes other things, but mostly books. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed because like, why not? So today I am going to be doing something very exciting. Today I'm going to be talking about Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. So yesterday was the release day for Wayward Son and I got my book in yesterday and I started it last night, stayed up very late went to sleep finally and then I woke up and finished like the second half of the book so I have just finished it my thoughts are like fresh on my mind so I just need to get them out right now the first half of this video is going to be spoiler free so don't worry you won't be spoiled I will let you know before I go into spoilers also I'm wearing flowers you see yeah like Baz's shirt I just I love him okay we are the same I am Baz <laughs> so we already have seen Simon fulfill his purpose basically um we saw in carry on how he defeated the evil force that he was meant to and prophesized to he was the hero um he gave everything he had and he fulfilled his hero's like journey right and with that came him giving up his powers um not willingly but he lost his power so he literally gave everything that he had to give and now we are having the sequel and dealing with the aftermath of what happens after a hero has fulfilled their journey. And I think that concept is very interesting and something like really cool to explore and to get to um, and to get to read about. And I think that Rainbow Rowell did it very well. I don't have any complaints about Rainbow Rowell's writing style. I've never read um, anything else by her. I've only read Carry On, so I've never read Fangirl. I've never read Eleanor and Park, and I know there is big controversy when it comes to Rainbow Rowell, but for me, as my reading journey, I have just never read her other works. I don't know anything about them, but Carry On. So all I have to judge her and base her on is her works through Carry On and Wayward Son now. So I do think that she kept her same style. It was fun and witty and humorous and entertaining overall and you just want to keep reading because it's very fun and I really appreciate that so I don't have anything to I don't have anything negative to say on that aspect however I do think that the plot of this book was minimalized compared to carry on the plot was not as big as in the grand scheme of things because of course carry on was a hero journeys book and like the hero and all of the um, other protagonists are on a mission right and so um and there was like an evident um villain and things like that and when whereas wayward son is just the aftermath and it's not gonna have a plot that is extremely like full force driven like this is what we're going for this is what we gotta do to get there let's do it it's not like that and i don't know if that's what didn't sit well with me but i just felt that it was a step down i felt like the plot was a step down from carry on now, is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? You could debate that either way. It was still entertaining. I still enjoyed it. I still recommend it, but it was just different. And I think that's important to take note of. Very Morel's characters in Carry On, so Simon Snow, Baz, Penelope, Agatha, they are still very true in Wayward Son. I could differentiate them no matter like how quickly the POVs change because Wayward Son does have like switching POVs just like Carry On and it happens like every other chapter sometimes in the same chapter and i could always you know get really fast into each one's mindset because the way that they are so like distinct and i love that i love these characters so much and i appreciate getting to go back and like be with them for this book and it's a short book it's only 350 pages it's not very long but i did appreciate getting to like go back and be with them i do think that they were still very true to their characters but the things that they had to deal with in this book did cause us to see a different side of the characters, especially with Simon. I do think the book was lacking what a lot of people were expecting. And if you have read it, you I'm going to go further on with this in the spoiler section. But without spoiling, let me just say that I do think this book lacked something that we all wanted. Um, and I... I don't know if you can pick up what I'm putting down. I don't want you to get the wrong assumption, but it was just lacking a bit in a certain department of um, what we as a fandom 
were wanting, okay? Overall, I would say I give this book a 3.5. Now, I gave Carry On a 4.5, and it's hard to not compare the two, so I'm not going to care, and I'm just going to compare them anyway. I gave Carry On a 4.5 because I couldn't really find anything wrong with the plot or with the characters, and the fact that I loved the characters so much put it up there with to a 4.5. Now, with Carry On, the thing that made me demote it like a whole star is that I didn't feel with the plot. I didn't feel that there was an existential thing that we were going for. And I think that's something as a reader I look for and I root for and I need when I read. And that's just me. Like, that could be just on me. Like, that's not on Rainbow Row. Like, that's not on Wayward Sun. That's on me. So if you have a different opinion, like, that's on you. <laughs> but that's just how I felt. And, um, I don't think 3.5 is a bad rating. That's still pretty good, you know? This book was by no means, um, bad. It wasn't. So I did enjoy it, and I was really, really entertained the whole book. So I, I can't say that I didn't like it, because I did. I adored it. I loved it. I'm glad to have read it. Um, but with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and get into spoilers, because I don't have much else that I can say without spoiling. So if you do not want to be spoiled for Wayward Son... If you do not want to be spoiled for Wayward Son, I am telling you to leave now, okay? Like, if you don't want to be spoiled, it's not on me from this point on. Here's your warning. I told you, you cannot blame me for being spoiled because I told you. So, you gotta go. Just, just go. Just go pause this video, go like and comment and subscribe, and, and then you can leave, okay? Alright, so let's just get it out. Like, let me just say it. This book didn't have the romance that I thought it would. It didn't have the romance that I expected, and it didn't have the romance that I wanted. And it's very, very frustrating. It was so frustrating for me because Simon and Baz are literally just have so much miscommunication the whole book, and you cannot deny it. So, like, we get their different point of views, and you get Simon, and he, in his head he's saying, I need to break up with Baz to do it for him because I know he doesn't like me. And then you get Baz in his mindset saying, I love Simon so much, why can't we talk? I wish we could say this out loud. And I'm just like, why? Why can't you just talk? And that miscommunication trope is so frustrating. And I really thought we were out of that in YA. I really thought we could be done with that miscommunication. Like, I just, I just saw it, right? Like, that's on me, I guess. It's like, they caught me slipping because I thought my mistake, my bad. And I just did not like that. I, I wanted Simon and Baz to go on this road trip in America and to be in love and to be together and to be happy. And that's not what I got. It was just very frustrating. Now, I do want to touch upon Simon because when the book starts, it is very obvious that Simon is not the old Simon that we have known. He has basically fulfilled his purpose in life, so he thinks and he has nothing else to live for and that's pretty much what what is going on like that's his situation and that's his mindset and it is pretty clear that Simon is depressed I mean I'm just gonna say it I think he is depressed and I don't think that's a um wrong assumption because the things that he says the way that he's acting the way that he's being lazy and not wanting to do anything, not having a want to do anything. I think that gives us warrant to believe that he is depressed or at the very least going through, he's going through it. Like he's going through some stuff, right? And he needs to work it out. And I'm glad that this book is him working it out and him going to America and getting out of the house and getting onto this journey, doing things with Baz and Penelope and getting out there and feeling like he has a purpose again and feeling like he's important and has things to do. I do understand that could be a trigger for the miscommunication, but I still think that Rainbow Rowell could have wrote a romance more than what is in this book and gave us um, the love story that we want. I do think that the ending was decent. It was exciting. It was action. It was, um, you know, a twist and um, it ended on a good note. I mean, everybody made it out alive. Everybody um, made it whole. There are just like some questions that we are left with. So the epilogue and the prologue thing confused me because the epilogue is at the beginning of this book and the prologue is at the end. And to me, it seems that the epilogue in Wayward Son is the epilogue to Carry On that we didn't get in Carry On. And then the prologue at the end of Wayward Son 
is essentially the prologue of the next book that she's going to release in the series if that even makes sense because um the ending scene the very last scene is when simon's sitting there and baz goes to talk to him and they finally hash it out and simon finally spits it out that you would be happier here in america with these other vampires and baz finally spits it out why can't you see that i would not be happy with anybody but you or whatever he says and i'm just like finally if you would have said that on the first page things would have been chill simon would have been a little happier and reassured in y'all's relationship and so we get that and i'm like yay like we're about to be you know we're gonna be we're gonna get like another cute snow bath scene but no what happens right after that Penelope comes running on the beach yelling at Baz saying that there is trouble in Watford and they gotta go and I'm just like no are you kidding me this was a bigger cliffhanger than carry on and I'm like no like come on I thought she was gonna wrap everything up like make it a duology and now I'm just like no like we are getting another book in the carry on series i know we are we are getting another simon and baz story and i'm just hoping that in that one there will be more um romance in them actually resolving but i just feel like she didn't have to go for another book she could have done that in the second book i don't understand there's no denying that we're getting another book like she set up for it perfectly she even put in her in the acknowledgments Yes, I read the acknowledgments. That's like my favorite part of reading a book. She put in the acknowledgments that she's happy to get to continue writing about Simon and Baz. And I'm like, we're getting another one. It's, it's, hasn't been said, but I know we are. Also, why don't they make this version of Carry On in hardcover? Because like, I want them to match and uh, they don't. That makes me sad. But I don't know, I guess they're, it's all right. So overall, I do give this book a 3.5. I was not mad about it. It was entertaining, very fun the whole entire time. And I loved um, the moments that we did get with Simon and Baz um, and their romance. I did love the humor and how funny they were. We did get introduced to a new character, Shepard. And I think he was kind of a cool character. I mean, I think he has a lot of quirkiness to him and not the fact that he is just a normal but he um has been cursed and he's been chasing magical creatures and magical people and vampires because he just wants to be in that world which is kind of dumb but i do see him as a possible um love interest for penelope or possibly agatha but probably penelope and i think that would be something that i would like to see i loved baz's outfits like i could picture them so clearly in my head his freaking flower suits that is amazing i love that beautiful i also liked whenever the scenes where simon was like simon was like very jealous of the vampire king and i think that was cute jealousy isn't cute but it was just i don't know it was just funny and then it also played on to the fact that they have miscommunication and simon isn't secure in his relationship because he thinks baz might flirt with other guys so that definitely needs to be resolved in the next book and i'm gonna be waiting on that but that's pretty much all i have to say if you don't know i'm doing a giveaway at 200 subscribers so you should subscribe and you could possibly win a kankin backpack a book signed by a really big author some bookish goodies and some non-bookish goodies so you should definitely subscribe so you can be here when i hit 200 but that's pretty much all i have to say so i hope you guys like this video and i hope you like this video down below and i'll see you guys in the next one bye